Hello, my name is Karina Ali Rodriguez Toledo. I go by Cartsy on social media, and welcome to the Rosalind series. Now, this is the second to last episode of the Rosalind series, and we're gonna talk all about the rough. Now, I started this rough back when I was doing competition, but then I stopped because I was running out of time to finish it, and at one point I got a bit, bit frustrated. So, recently, because of, <laughs> of quarantine, I picked it up, and this is going to be the episode all about the rough. So I'm going to start all the way from the beginning, where in where in during the competition I was working on it, and then eventually you'll get to currently. So what I was doing this week. Hope you enjoy. I haven't had time to determine how much linen I need for the rough, so that's another thing I have to take into account. I'm doing the rough, which involves not only making it, but also get, taking out some cooking pots and stuff like that and starching it. At this point in the video, I was experimenting and trying to figure out exactly how to make this rough because I I had never done it before. It's getting the shape. At this rate, if I kept pleating so closely together, I wouldn't have enough fabric in the end. So this attempt showed me visually the shape I wanted, but I needed to change my method. It was here in the rough journey that I felt like something was off. The project would be dropped for some time, until, that is, a pandemic arised. A while back, I made this rough and I did temporary stitches onto the neckband. And when I made it, I got a little bit frustrated because it was too full and I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing to an extent. I'm going to seam rip the rough off the neckband, stretch it out again, and then redo it and see if this has too much fabric. Okay, so now I have my rough all like this, and I figured out that yes, I just need to take out a whole lot out of this rough. So what's gonna happen now is I'm going to unpin this waistband off, now that I've tried it on. I'm going to get rid of all that gathering. Because I know that this lace extends all the way to about where I want the halfway point of how much in this rough to be.
I have acquired more lace via curbside pickup. Because right now we're gonna start just rough and I hope it's a success. I've never done this before. I got this. Okay, so I am following along with Constance's video. I'll have a link for her in the description. But she said the first step is to fill the water with a bowl basically. And I'm supposed to get the rough damp. So let's do this. Okay, so we are at my towel setup. And I am actually very nervous to get this wet. So. Let's hope everything goes fine. Okay, here we go. My heart, my heart. All right, now let's ring this out. The lace is synthetic, so it's not holding any of the water. It's just the linen that's holding the water. Okay. So now we have a damp rough. Here we go. Now, in Constance's video, she boils water in a kettle, and then she's using that while she's making the starch. But you see, I'm American and we don't make tea, so let's just boil a pot of water. So I think I'm gonna go with three-fourths a cup. So I have my cornstarch that I got at Target, and let's see what happens. Yeah, this is enough. I filled up a glass with cold water, but I'm gonna leave it in the fridge while the hot water boils, just to see if I can get this a little bit colder. Okay, so I've angled the camera as close to the stove as I dare. The water is boiling already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding in the starch. I haven't turned on the stove yet. Let me just put all of it in. Make spoon all out. I'm gonna start adding water slowly and I'm gonna turn down the boiling water. And let's start pouring in some cold water. Okay, this is a thicker consistency than I thought it would be. Okay. It's gonna be a little harder than I thought. It's currently liking the stick at the bottom in the pot. So I have to really, really move this. I'm a little bit weirded out by what's happening here. 
So I'm gonna add just a little bit more and pray I'm not messing up. So I'm not getting the clumps like Constance did, and I'm wondering if I might have added a little bit too much water in the first go. Yeah, I don't know what to do but add more starch. So here we go. Okay, I think that's enough for cold water. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing the hot water. Let's pour just a little bit. Okay. Oh, oh, something happened. I don't know what's happening, but something happened. Now I'm starting to get something. A little bit like clumps. Let me keep at it. Okay, now we're getting consistency. Still very liquidy though, and that's concerning me. Again, whenever the hot water enters the pot, we get like this white clear substance that tends to form at the top and I'm taking that as a good sign of some sort of reaction happening to at least one step working so let's keep stirring okay so what I'm getting looks a little bit like what happens towards the end of what's supposed to happen let me add a little more hot water and let's continue at this not really sure what's happening scientifically. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a chef. I'm a seamstress with a pot full of cornstarch and cold and hot water. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, we're getting some sort of jelly. Now, if I learned anything from Bernadette's video on making starch, so I don't want it to be jelly jelly. I think Constance said there was like a right consistency we're supposed to have. And this looks kind of jelly, but more liquidy. So I'm guessing I'm in the right track. I kind of want to say that this feels easy, but in reality it feels a little too easy and that's concerning me. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, we're getting clumps. Now, Constance said something about squishing the clumps at the side of the pot. So let me do that. I really don't know when this is done, when this is supposed to be done, or if I just keep adding more hot water. So let me keep stirring. Okay, so Constance stopped um, her pot at 18 minutes, but she said that you should be able to drive a line through with your spatula and there'd be like a little trail following after. Now that's not happening with me. Maybe I added a bit too much water, but I'm gonna keep stirring for a little bit longer because we're starting to get clumps again. And maybe this is when we're getting to like the good part where I can get to the next step. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're at the part where I'm starting to see what Constance meant. I am getting a little more gooey. It's less runny. So I think mine is at a pretty good consistency. So I'm gonna shut off my stove. And yes, when I drive my spatula through this, I can see the bottom of the pot. Because it's that gooey thickness. On to the next step. Okay, so I've put something made of iron underneath my towel. So when I put the pot here, everything's fine. Actually, no, wait. Let me switch that. I'm putting it on top of the towel. <laughs> and Constance did mention that this would be the time when we should put on our gloves. So I don't have rubber gloves like she suggested, but I do have something. They don't go as high, but at least they're something. Okay, so now's the time in which we put the rough into the pot. Okay, this is very scary for me, but, okay, here we go. Oh, oh, that hurts my soul. <laughs> okay. Oh, my baby. Okay, I gotta massage it into every crevice of this thing. Oh, this already feels heavy now. I was a bit nervous to know how the synthetic lace would react to the starch. So we're gonna see. So it's getting a little tricky to not get this starch on myself while I try to wring it out. Okay, so the rough is now starched. It's gonna be laying on the table to dry. Every so often I'm gonna come over and make sure that nothing's sticking together too much as it dries. And then and I'll get back to you in the morning. On another note, I have to figure out how to dispose of this. It is 7.23 in the morning. I'm a little bit late to my 5.30 wake up, but I'm still up and it's still early and it's still morning. I have to check on the rough, which if you remember, I starched last night with those weird science cooking badness that happened in the kitchen. So now I'm gonna turn on the light and I'm gonna see just what happened to this rough. So here's what's happened. The lace, a lot of the lace, not all the lace, has dried, but the linen has not. So I brought out an actual drying rack and I'm gonna see if this dries faster like this. The great thing about waking up early is that I'm able to check on things like this. Now, since I woke up early, I was able to check to see the rough was all damp. And just by putting it on this rack, it's getting drier so much quicker than the hours I left to the dry last night. I'm really feeling getting it stiff. The lace is pretty much almost completely dry. It's just the linen itself. It is officially 24 hours since this rough has been starch. And oh, hi dog. So what's the verdict? It is completely starch. It is dry. And now I can finally sit down and attack this thing with a curling iron. Okay, so right here is my wig stand. It's basically a music stand that I no longer used. So I had my dad chop off the top and I put a foam head on it. So this is what we're gonna use to stick the rough on. I have the curling iron. I am very nervous to use this because I don't curl my hair. My mom helps me with that. Let's just I'm just here and see what happens. Oh, it held shape. See that? Okay, okay. Let's let's continue this madness. And 
finally I am sewing in the closure. This is the finished rough. I don't even know how long this thing took me to actually complete. I started it back in the competition, then I got frustrated and I ran out of time. And although I was so excited over it, I just, I just didn't have the time with my hectic schedule to actually complete it. And then quarantine happened and I'm here with the series and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna finally tackle this thing. And so now I finally tackled it and I'm so happy with how it came out. There's some problems with it because in my first one, um, it's still a little bit wrinkled and you get all those wrinkles out somehow. But I am actually really satisfied with how it looks for the first time. This is going to be one of those super fun things to wear around the house or even out in public. I should figure out how to style this. Thanks for watching today's video. Now remember, the next video is going to be the last video of the Rosalind series. It's been a very long time. This series is what I sparked me to start YouTube and I just, I hope you enjoy it. The next video is all is gonna be a try on of the costume where you're gonna see me going on a little adventure. And then it's also gonna be the final update. So what final little small things, knowing now going over all my footage that I wanna fix. So I'm gonna fix those things. And then also in that video will be the final sequence in which I talk about what happened at competition and the surprise that happened in the end. Please make sure to leave a comment down below in the comment section. Um, ask me anything you want to know about this whole series or anything at all, even if it's just about me. I'll be answering them in the next video. God bless and bye! Hey, what are you doing? Hey, you look like a poodle. He just got a bath and now he insists on rubbing his wet self all over this cushion. In rebellion. Ha <laughs> ha!